My name's Jane Oakhill and I work at the University of Sussex. For many years, in fact since my PhD, one thread of my research has been the investigation of problems with reading comprehension. Specifically, those children who are average or quite good at word recognition, but relatively poor at answering questions about a story that they've just read. This problem came to my attention when I was a primary school teacher. I taught eight to nine year olds and I noticed that some children could read very competently but seemed to have no idea about what was going on in the story that they were reading. They couldn't explain what had happened previously and seemed unable to predict how the story might progress. That preliminary interest led me to pursue a PhD under the inspiring supervision of Phil Johnson Laird. And during my PhD research, I began to look in more detail at what goes wrong with these children's comprehension, i.e. the processes that contribute to skilled comprehension and which ones they have problems with. My early studies showed, studies showed that these problems are not simply a matter of poor vocabulary or poor memory, but that less skilled comprehenders have difficulties with, in particular, making inferences from text, monitoring their understanding, and understanding how stories and texts are structured. I'll say a little bit more about each of these areas to provide a better idea of the sorts of problems that skilled comprehenders have. In the case of inferences, they have difficulties with making inferences to link up adjacent sentences, such as understanding anaphores or co-referential links, such as Sasha Baron Cohen is making a new film. The 42-year-old actor where 42-year-old actor and Sasha Baron Cohen are co-referential. They also have trouble making up inferences that link up the ideas at a more global level to derive the setting or the theme of a text. These problems occur even though the less skilled comprehenders have the relevant knowledge. They seem to have particular difficulties in activating and applying their prior knowledge to make sense of a text. The second main area that I and my colleagues have investigated is comprehension monitoring. That is, knowing whether or not comprehension is progressing well and knowing what to do if it's not, such as looking up a word or rereading part of the text. A third area is understanding how stories and texts are structured. This skill can help a reader derive a framework for understanding the text. We've shown in a variety of ways that less skilled comprehenders have trouble um, in this area. For instance, they have difficulties stating what the point of a title is. They have problems in picking out the appropriate main point for a story, even picture stories. And they're not so good as better comprehenders at telling well-connected and coherent stories themselves. These studies indicate that less skilled comprehenders have problems not only with reading, but also with listening and with understanding picture sequences, and even telling stories themselves. This knowledge about sub-skills is very useful because these sub-skills are more tangible and one can see how they might be taught. However, these are likely to be interrelated sub-skills um, in that what might be lacking uh, whether in production or in comprehension, could be what Paul Vandenbroek has termed a drive for coherence. Subsequent to my PhD, I worked with uh, Nicola Yule, Peter Bryant and Kate Kane in particular, but many others have contributed to this work. More recently, and in particular during my collaboration with Kate, we've been working towards trying to ascertain the extent to which the skills I outlined are independent or intertwined, and which of these skills and abilities might be causally implicated in the development of reading comprehension, as obviously those are the skills that intervention target, uh, sorry, program should target. Kate and I recently published a paper in Scientific Studies of Reading that summarises this work. In summary, we found that there's at least some independence between these skill areas we've investigated and from that study and others, we have evidence that at least some aspects of inference making and this idea of a drive for global text coherence play a causal role in comprehension development. 
In recent years, I've been delighted to see that these aspects of my work were mentioned in the independent review of the teaching of early reading by Jim Rose, and that the recommendations from that review have directly influenced recent revisions to the primary level national English curriculum. I've also been very pleased that my findings have been used to inform the successful inference training programme developed by Tony Watmuff in Leicester, and an extensive published comprehension training pro programme developed by a group of educational psychologists in Argentina. It's very rewarding that this work is now having real practical implications, and I hope that these sorts of programmes, which are based on research findings, will continue to flourish and develop.